look at that young Brewers fan. Now, wait a minute. He is. Did he get? No. Oh, oh boy. He's sour. Oh, he's bummed. Are out. you kidding me? This kid's going to do this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That is big time. Oh, my right goodness. There. I can't believe I just witnessed that. That is that just, awesome. You yep. young man are you a young star. Men are awesome. We can show the world that it's all right to be kind, and then before long, maybe the world will be a much better place. Well, an act of kindness at a St. Pete Starbucks drive-thru inspired an 11-hour chain of paying it forward. It comes from your heart. I think it's amazing. Don't forget to show love. Thank you, baby. You're welcome. Don't forget to show love. Don't forget to show love. Thank you. If we all make today awesome for somebody else, it will be awesome for everybody. I'm okay with that. in a series entitled Be Awesome. And for every one of us, God intends that we would live an awesome life. I ask the question rhetorically, if there was a warning label in your life, what would it read? Would it read flammable? Would it read handle with care? If you had a label on your life regarding your attitude, would it say toxic? Would it say danger zone? Here in the last few uh, days, we've had the grandchildren at the house. In fact, for a period of time, all of our grandchildren were at over at house at one time. Both our daughters and son-in-laws were on vacation. So we had all four of them, age three through age 11. And in that season, everyone wants something different, and everyone needs something different. They, one wants juice, and one wants this, and one wants milk, and one wants water, and one, you know how it is, all different age groups. Well, I asked one evening, well, what are we going to have for dinner this evening? And Denise, my wife, spoke up in kind of this, this announcing it language, we're having pizza. So she stepped out, and I just gathered the grandkids around me, and I said, you know what? She'll make you whatever you want. So what do you want? So I got the kids all to just choose something different. One wanted tacos, and one wanted a chalupa, and one wanted rice with meatballs. And So I got them all wanting something different. I said, now go tell Grandma. She will make you whatever you want. Now, that wasn't done out of meanness at all, Okay. But Denise might put a warning label on me that reads, may cause irritation, huh? <laughs> yeah. What would your warning label be? Well, let's just talk about it a little bit. There are three general categories I'm going to put people into, and most people will fall into one of these three categories. There's the person that's awful, average, and awesome. Awful, average, and awesome. The awful person, you know who they are. You've already identified them. They're the coarse, abrasive, rude person. They're the person that you don't like to be around. They're the person that often spits out vulgarity. You, you know what? They just, they, just are, they, they just rub you the wrong way. But many of us fall into the category as average. You know, we don't rock the boat. You know, we're, we're not superheroes, but guess what? We're not villains either. We're just, we're just average. They tell us the average person in America spends about two hours a day on social media, five hours a day on their phone, has about $34 on their person at any one time, and is about 17 pounds overweight. So are you average or not? I'll let you decide that. And sometimes we can just be comfortable with being average. I want to suggest to us that God's Word invites us and challenges us not to be average, but to be above average. I'm going to say be awesome, be extraordinary. Jesus put it this way in Matthew chapter 5, verse number 16. He said, let your light shine before others 
before your in-law, before your coworker, before your neighbor, before the person at the checkout counter, before the, the, the wait staff in the restaurant you go to. Let your light so shine before them that they may see your good deeds, your good deeds, and glorify the Father in heaven. In other words, Jesus is saying, don't let anything dull your shine. Don't let anything dull your spark. Don't be average. Average people complain. Average people, if, if they're treated rudely, they're given rude back. Average people just float along, don't make a difference. And Jesus said, be awesome. Have an awesome attitude. Have an awesome disposition. Be that person that goes up and above, that go the second mile, that shines forth with the best spirit and the best attitude. In Romans chapter number 12, we're reading and, and unpacking these verses throughout the month. Last week we talked about verse number 9. I'm going to speak on verse number 10, but let's, let's read through the verses again to let God's Word teach us. Romans chapter 12, verse number 9. Let love, let love be sincere. You could use the word genuine. Let love be genuine. We all know fake love. We all know when it's flattery. Let your love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. That, that's, that's a good word for Christ followers today. When Christ followers speak their value, people say it's hate speech. No, it's not. We hate the evil, but we love the person. We can hate the evil. We can disapprove of the lifestyle. We can disapprove of the attitude. We can disapprove of, of, the, of the vulgarity and still love the person. The Scripture says that we can love, hate what is evil, e evil and we can cling to what is good. Let's go on to verse number 10. Be devoted to one another uh, in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. And what I want to suggest to us as we look at verse number 10, there is something for every Christ follower today on how we can be awesome, how we can rise above average, how we can be a witness for Jesus in our workplace, in our society, in our circle of friendships. How we can be that extraordinary person. And I want to share with you, extraordinary requires extra. If we're going to be extraordinary, we have to do something extra. Go the second mile. Go beyond what is standard. Go beyond what is average. Not do what everybody else does. The Bible calls us to live to a higher standard of that. Notice verse number 10. Be devoted to one, one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. There's two extras in there. In brotherly love, above yourself. Do something extra. Brotherly love. Let's talk about it a moment. You know, there's a city in America that boasts it's the city of brotherly love. Do you know what it is? No, it's not Hondo. What is it? What is it? Philadelphia. Philadelphia brags that it's the city of brotherly love. A point of information. The New Testament is written in the Greek language. It's translated in our Bibles in English. The Greek word for love or brotherly love there is the Greek word Philadelphia. The city of Philadelphia took the Greek word and called itself Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. And here's what I want to do. I want to admonish every Christ follower to move to Philadelphia. Okay, now... I'm not, I'm not really saying move out of your home. You don't have to leave San Antonio. You, you don't have to change zip codes. You don't have to sell your house. You don't have to get a new job. But I'm admonishing us to move to brotherly love. Move into Philadelphia. 
Move as it were. Your citizenship may be San Antonio, but your heart is in Philadelphia. Your heart is a heart of brotherly love. Can I tell you about Philadelphia if you'll move there? The cost of living is higher there. It'll cost you forgiveness. It'll cost you looking past people's flaws. It'll cost you some of your pride. It'll cost you some of your conveniences. If you're going to live in the area and the city of Philadelphia, if you're going to really be a person of brotherly love, it will cost you something. But the divorce rate is lower. There's less stress there. Guess what? There are no jabs there. Social media is very civil in Philadelphia. Or you can live in what I'll call mean town. Average people live in mean town. The main road in mean town is called road rage. Yeah. It's a, in, in mean town, you give, your, you give your two cents worth anytime you want to. You're nice until somebody inconvenience you. you. You're civil until somebody rubs you the wrong way or pushes a button. And then all of a sudden, you have the right to offer your opinion and reprimand. And today, there's a lot of people in America, they're living in mean town. Our world today in America, it's become very uncivil. We, we're spitting out demagoguery, insults on social media. There's just a, there is a, a, a kind of an undertone of conflict and abrasiveness. We're, we're coarse. America has become rude. Something has happened in American society, and I'm calling on Christ followers. Move into Philadelphia. Get into the city of brotherly love. Be a person of compassion. Be a person that forgives. Be a person that is awesome in every area because others will say, you're not normal, you're not average, and they'll glorify the Father in heaven. They'll recognize God in our lives. Have you ever met mean Christians? <laughs> yeah. They know the Ten Commandments, but none of the Beatitudes of Jesus. They, they, they pray prayers with words of indignation and judgment and wrath and recompense. And they, 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 can, they can scold you while they pray for you. Have you ever met people like that? You know what I'm talking about? They scold you while they pray for you. Let me tell you, God has called us to be people of brotherly love. God has called us to a higher level. Ordinary Christ followers. Ordinary Christians. Ordinary Christ followers will have no witness for Jesus in our, in our generation. If we're going to be average, we have lost our platform as a witness for Jesus today. In our society, the phrase evangelical Christian is looked at as being hateful, passive, and often the punchline of late night comics. If we're going to be just average, where we tell people what we're against, and then our lifestyle and our attitude is ambivalent, coarse, and indifferent, we have lost our witness today. If we're going to really shine his lights, if we're going to be a witness for Jesus today, we're going to have to be awesome. Average people will not make an impact for God. Awful people will have no impact for God. God is looking for people, not perfect, but awesome. People that will say, God, my attitude, my actions are to please you. And I feel like every person I meet is an assignment from heaven to show forth God's goodness to them and to shine Jesus to them as well. God is calling us to be awesome. This past week, the, our entire country, America was in conversation about one incident there's a picture that will come on the screen behind me that kind of personifies the whole event. It was, it was about a trial in Dallas in which somebody was convicted of a 
of a horrible crime. It was terrible. Most of us know the details. I will not unpack that. That's not the purpose of this, of citing it. But once the sentence was delivered and it was over, the judge got up from the bench and stepped down and hugged the convicted person and handed her her own personal Bible. The judge gave her Bible to this lady convicted of the crime. She was not grandstanding. The judge was not, the Texas judge was not, was, was not trying to create a platform. She just spontaneously in a moment. And I said to my wife, with one Bible and one hug, she preached to America. One lady, one lady, not trying to give credit to herself. She stepped in a moment. And she had all of America talking about her. She's awesome. That judge is awesome. Oh, I heard some of the talk, news media, and they were pro and con. I heard some of the, I heard some of the criticisms. But how, how could you criticize a judge? She simply gave a hug and a Bible. Can I say, we have moments We have moments when we can make a difference. We have moments when we can have impact in people's lives. And if we'll be awesome, God will send in our pathway. God will see that people come across our path that we can make a difference. And you decide. You decide how you're going to respond to the coworker. You decide how you're going to respond to that family member. You decide how you're going to respond to the stranger. You decide how you respond to the wait staff in the restaurant today or the person at the checkout counter when you go to purchase something this week. We decide. And God is saying to us, be awesome. Extra requires us to do more. If we're going to be extraordinary, we must do the extra. And extra means, and I'm going to share with you very quickly four things that extra means going the second mile. Number one, extra means that we do what we can with what we have. A lot of people say, I can't do anything about. Extra means do what you can with what you have. There are places that you will step into this week, boardrooms, team meetings, sales meetings, workplace, circle of friends, co-workers, you will step in moments that I will never be invited to preach. But you can be God's witness. Do what you can with what you have. Very few of us can pick up and go to Africa and feed hungry children. Very few of us can go to Honduras or Haiti and live there and, and, and distribute uh, necessity to the to the needy people very few of us have solution for the social ills very few of us can can adequately respond to the addictions and of society and the problems and the ills of of life but we can do what we can there's somebody you're going to come in contact with this week whose marriage is falling apart whose son or daughter is addicted whose business is failing, whose career is stymied, and their heart is troubled. They're confused. And you can be God's witness to them. Do what you can with what you have. You may not be able to go to Africa or Haiti, but you can give an offering, and in one day you can feed the world. You could feed a child for a year. Sometimes you hear unbelievers tell you churches, they just think about themselves and all they want is money for themselves. And you can speak up and say, but my church, but my church is feeding a thousand children every day in third world countries. My church gives and and sustains and takes care of children around the world, places you would never go on vacation. My church is willing to go there and feed those children Do what we can with what we have. I invite you to do that. Number two, extra means. Extra means routinely complimenting others. The Bible tells us that we're to build one another up. 
to strengthen one another, to build one another up. There is a practice of self-harm today that really is, is grieving the heart of anyone that's familiar with it. It's called cutting. It's popular, particularly from age 9 to 14. Many of us are chagrined by the thought that someone would take a razor blade or a knife and actually cut themselves. Why would they do that? We say, that, that makes no sense to us whatsoever, but here's what psychologists tell us. The adolescents will cut themselves because this pain takes their mind off of the pain on the inside. Being raised in a broken home, an ego that is shattered, feeling bullied, that is, their esteem is, is absolutely just under attack. And this social media hate everyone and bully everyone culture that we live in and we think about it oh that's just that's that that's so grieving to our heart I ask the question does your heart grieve as much when someone says cutting words how about when somebody cuts somebody down on the job with sarcasm and insult oh we we think of an adolescent cuts that's horrible but we have become anesthetized to cutting words and cutting insults. And I call upon us routinely build one another up, encourage one another. I've got somebody to help, help me illustrate this. Jesse, would you come out here? Jesse's going to help me illustrate this point. The Bible says that we should speak good. As much as we have an opportunity, compliment and speak good of others. So Jesse, Jesse, we're to, we're, we're, to, we're to lift each other up. We're to encourage one another and just kind of illustrate this. Buddy, I want you to lift me up, okay? Just pick me up here, okay? Okay. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Am I one of those average Americans that's 17 pounds overweight? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. You doing all right? Okay, Jesse, here it is. You see, it's easier to pull somebody down than it is to pick them up. Stand up there, buddy. Stand up there. How easy it is to pull somebody down. It's harder to pick people up. It's easy to be the critic. It's easy to pick out people's flaws, their shortcomings. It's easy to be the critic of the coworker, the stepson, the stepdaughter, the family member. But it takes work to pick people up. Thank you, Jesse. I encourage us routinely practice building people up. Number three, be a peacemaker. Extra means being a peacemaker. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. People will know they're awesome. People will say they have to be a child of God because that's not average. That's not natural. That's not normal. It's, it's normal to take a side. It's normal to scandalize somebody. It's normal to have an opinion. It's normal to, to put people down. But when we are peacemakers, People know we belong to God. There's some of us, God's calling us to be a peacemaker. And we're saying to ourselves right now, it's, it's not my issue. I'm going to stay out of it. And the Holy Spirit is not going to allow you to do that. He's calling you. Be awesome. Number four, and last I share with you, extra means always do the next kind thing. Always do the next kind thing. Sometimes we think kindness is seasonal. Well, at Christmas time, I'll do something, or uh, it's occasionally I do something. But I want to suggest is God intends for us to do the next kind thing. Have you ever wondered why the difficult, abrasive, hard to get along person is always assigned to your work area? You ever wondered why that? God, why, why, why is it the knucklehead always is in my area? The difficult person. Why, 
Why, do, why can't I get great people in our team and my work area? Because God trusts you enough and he knows that you can be an awesome person. And God assigns people in our pathway, in our circle. And God says, because you're awesome, they will see your good works and they'll glorify the Father in heaven. So tomorrow when you go to work, Tuesday when you go to the class, when the students come in, when the coworker comes in, when the employees arrive, when the situation arises, instead of being a critic, it's easy to put people down. God wants us to lift people up. God's saying, be awesome. Do the next kind thing. Would you stand with me for prayer as we close? Let's pray. Father, I sense right now the Holy Spirit is speaking to lots of us, identifying a family member, a coworker, an acquaintance, a person that you're challenging us to do the next kind thing in their life, to give extra, to go that extra mile, to extend God's heart to them. I pray, Lord that we will see them different and we will respond to them different. Let us put on the attitude of Jesus. Let us put on the disposition of Jesus. And God, let us let you shine through our lives. Let us bring glory to God by demonstrating a Christ-like attitude towards unbelievers. Having a an attitude of encouragement, having a disposition of, of edifying and lifting people up. God, remove from us the cutting, pull-down words. Let us not be silent when that happens in the workplace. Give us, an, give us the courage to speak up. Give us the courage to see the good in others and affirm that. I pray that your people will be awesome in Jesus' name. Amen. As I dismiss you, I have an assignment for you. I'm going to invite you to begin to just be awesome right here. Yeah. Now just, just be friendly. Baptize this campus, hallways, and even the parking lot with kindness. If it can work in the parking lot, it can work in any war zone in the world, okay? Just be awesome. Share God's heart. Share Jesus with people around you. Have you ever seen somebody sitting around you and say, you know, I, I just like watching them worship. Have you ever said that? Have you ever affirmed that? Have you ever complimented them? Have you ever complimented somebody's children to them or just something that impressed upon your heart? Be awesome everywhere you go. God bless you. You're dismissed. <laughs>